Martensitic transformation involves the homogeneous deformation of the parent austenite into the crystal structure of the product. The disciplined motion of atoms during the transformation can be observed directly by polishing the austenite completely flat as shown here. The formation of the martensite will then lead to surface displacements as the atoms move in unison to form the plates of martensite. The bainite transformation is also displacive, so it should not be surprising that similar displacements are observed when a flat surface of austenite is allowed to transform into bainite. shape deformations that we have just seen can be measured accurately and described as follows. Consider a cube of austenite. Here we are drawing a cross section of dimension 1 and there are no deformations occurring through the thickness of this board. So we label this as gamma to indicate austenite. When it transforms into martensite, the shape will change as follows. So this is the shear strain S and this is the volume change which is normal to the habit plane. So S is the shear strain and typically has a value of about 0 0.26 and delta is the volume change, the volume strain, normal to the habit plane. and is of the order of 0 0.03. These are very large deformations. A typical elastic strain when we pull a piece of steel to a stress of 200 megapascals has a strain of only 10 to the minus 3. Therefore, there will be very large strain energy terms when martensite forms within a material because these large displacements are pushing against the other crystals surrounding it. So the strain energy per unit volume, E, which is the strain energy per unit volume, is given by C over R, which is the thickness over the length of the plate, into the shear modulus of the austenite multiplied by S squared plus delta squared. So this is the shear modulus of gamma. And C is the thickness of the martensite. and R is the length of the plate of martensite. So let's try and understand where this equation here comes from. It was derived originally by Christian in 1958 and he used uh, Eshelby's theory to work, work the equation out. Trouble is, uh, Eshelby's theory is really quite complicated. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you the physical basis of this equation using uh, simpler methods. So, uh, if I plot the stress, the shear stress, versus the shear strain, then the, in the Hooke's law regime where stress and strain are perpendicular, uh, are proportional, you get a straight line. The area under this curve is the strain energy per unit volume, E, 
which is equal to half the shear stress times the shear strain and that is equivalent to half the modulus times the strain squared. So that immediately tells us why we have this squares of the strains in Christian's equation and also why we have a shear modulus here related to the strain energy per unit volume. What we do not understand is why does the strain energy per unit volume scale with the thickness to length ratio. But suppose uh, we look at our diagram again and start with a, a cube of austenite okay. and this is the habit plane. Then as a consequence of martensitic transformation you, or bainitic transformation for that matter you get a shape deformation. Now the displacements at every point parallel to the habit plane are given by these arrows and you notice that the displacements increase with distance from the habit plane. So the displacements increase with distance from habit plane. Now the strain is constant because the strain is the displacement divided by the height. Strain is constant. But if this crystal is surrounded by many other crystals then you can imagine that as we go further and further away from the habit plane you have larger and larger displacements and therefore the plate tries to minimize its uh, strain energy by becoming thin. So this is what a plate of martensite or bainite would actually look like and at the tip you effectively have the same strain strain at tip but negligible displacement so having a thin plate in other words a small c upon r does lead to a reduction in the strain energy per unit volume and this is the basic reason why martensite, bainite, mechanical twinning, all of them have a thin plate shape because that shape gives the minimum strain energy per unit volume. Now obviously C upon R should not be zero because otherwise we do not get any phase transformation. So the actual aspect ratio corresponds to how much chemical free energy change is driving the transformation. The greater the chemical free energy change, the thicker can be the martensite plate.